So uh, you said you joined up before the war. When when exactly did you join? When? Yes. 1938. And uh, why did you join up? Well, it's a long story, really. We've got plenty of time. <laughs> yeah. uh, you see, when I was uh, 14, and then we, from Burnley, we moved to Fleetwood. And uh, instead of going back to the school for the last few months, went down on the docks with a few of the four, three more lads. And uh, Mac Fisheries had bought 15 new trawlers from Germany. And uh, they come along, they see us four, and this bloke come along, he said, do you want to go see lads? And we said yes. So we went, I went on one and the others went on the other three uh, at deep sea fishing around uh, Iceland, Norway and Greenland. And we did that for four years. And then we all met and then we got fed up with that. And we said, well, what are we going to do? And then we tossed up the Army, Navy, Air Force, the Merchant Navy. Oh no, not. Not the Air Force, no, it was the, I wanted to go whaling. So we tossed up the army one, so we all joined the army. Went down to forward barracks in Preston and joined up, got the King's Shilling. Mm -hmm. And uh, they give you a book book of uh, all the cut, cut badges. And uh, I picked up the White Horse of Kent, which is... What well, I was in then, the Queen's Own Royal West Kent Regiment in Maidstone. Mm -hmm. And we got a ticket then to go to Maidstone. And uh, that's where we joined up. When you joined up, did, they, did any of them ask you for proof of your age? Uh, no, no, there was, all, there was all about 18 then, yeah. yeah. And that was the age. No, but did they ask you for proof of your age just to prove you were 18? Oh yeah, oh yeah, they always, always, they always ask that, yes. Oh yes, you got a proof them, them days, yeah. Although sometimes before some of them got in. Of course, well, that was when the war was on because, yeah, they, uh, so we went to Maston and uh, we did our training there. The first three months you're not allowed out of the barracks because you're learning how to walk and... Uh, how to hold yourself upright and whatever, you know, all the old ball that they give you. So, uh, were you surprised when you heard war had started? Well, being in the army, yes, we, uh, we was, uh, you know, hearing rumours. Yeah. So did you join the regular army and not the territorials? Oh, no, the regular army I joined. Okay, right. Yeah. So, uh, what can you tell me about your army training? My army training. Well, as I said, we, we were in the, in the barracks at Maidstone. You're in there three months before you go out. You're learning how to walk, how to dress yourself, how to be just disciplined. That's what you was taught was discipline. And then from there, I went to uh, Shorncliffe to join the 1st Battalion of the West, West Kents. And uh, I didn't do a lot of training there. We did. You went on manoeuvres and all that, but no jungle training whatsoever. It was all house fighting and all that. Uh, because, I mean, nobody knew the Japanese was fighting out there when, you know, it, it wasn't known. It was only Germany and it was... And, uh, and then I was at, I was at Shorncliffe. And then I got called in the office and uh, I was told to report back to Mason and I became a PT, physical training instructor. And then I stayed there until uh, 1940, the end of 1941. Mm -hmm. In 42. And then the footballers started coming in, taking over our jobs. And then we were sent out, and uh, we were sent out to the front then. You said you were do you practiced in house fighting. How did you practice for that? Well, not house fighting. You're on manoeuvres. Mm -hmm. 
you know, out in, out in the field and all that, you know, firing live ammunition over your head so as you get down and all that kind of stuff, you know, through grenades and throwing grenades and and all that, and uh, map reading and finding your way here, there and everywhere, you, you, you know, you're taught all that. What kind of weapons were you training with? 303 rifles, yeah. That's the old, the old rifles. That is the Enfield, is that? The Enfield, yeah. Do you train with any machine guns at all? Oh, you had the brain gun. You, you was taught the brain gun, yeah. And then when I went, when I went to the Far East, and then uh, I had a Thompson submachine gun, because well, I, I became a corporal then, two stripes. Was a Thompson a good weapon? Oh yeah, it was Andy. Because she said he was firing one, you know, you're firing around and... Was the recoil on the Thompson ever a problem? Not a great lot, because it's only small, you know, it's not, it's not a big one. Okay, right. So what did you think of Chamberlain, his appeasement of Hitler? Well, I didn't have a lot of interest in the politics. <laughs> not at all. Look really. At... Looking... You know, he could have done more, but uh, there you go, you never know what these people do. Looking back, do you think he was wrong to appease Hitler? I do, yes. Yeah, I do. But uh, there again, what can we do? What did you think of Churchill during the war? Churchill? I think he was a lot of rubbish myself, but, uh, you know, he's only, he's only a figurehead, really. I mean, he wasn't all that bloody great, really. He was told what to do, what to say <coughs> by all his... People around him, you know, walking about with his fingers up with a cigar and half drunk half the time. <clears throat> down in his big bunker down below there, he's well away. One thing, he, he wouldn't come out to the Far East to visit the troops out there. So what kind of discipline were you taught when you were in the army? Hell of a lot of discipline and a lot of ball. But it did you well. That's what's lucky today, is discipline. Not just the army, the parents for the kids. It's discipline is the main thing, you know. I mean, I, at Maidstone Barracks, uh, before the war, every Friday you had a parade round the Barracks Square, all the squads, different squads, and you're all out. Uh, grab a phone in the corner, record playing Colonel Bogey and you march around, you know, uh, and you had to be in your best dress. The smartest one was picked for the stick orderly and he had to, he had a special job. But uh, when they said you could go out, you used to get dressed and then you go to the guard room, stand outside, <coughs> big mirror, and this the guard sergeant would come out and he'd look at you and lift your boot up. You've got 13 studs in your boots, not 12, 13. Uh, he'd look behind your buttons to see if there's any blank coat or boot polish and uh, brillo and uh, brasso, what you cleaned all your buttons with. You know, the tops would shine, but he'd look behind to make sure there was no... And if there was a bit of dirt behind, you couldn't go out. You had to go back. So we'd dress one lad up, get him, inspect all his bits and his applets up here and his collars on here and his cap badge behind there as well. Got to be clean. And sent him out. And if he got out, we'd be able to get out. If he got come back, Turned it in, you, you, you wouldn't be able to go out that day. Right. So you sent him out so, so you wouldn't have to well, clean yourselves? Y yeah. We used to all help to get him, check everything, you know. Somebody would say, you know, have you looked behind your cap badge? Look at his cap. Yeah, that's clean. The buttons, you know. Studs in your boots, because they'd look at your boots and you had to have 13 studs in. Do you ever regret joining up? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I regret the war. I mean, everybody regrets the war, but the army itself now, it's the finest thing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only thing is we was treated like dirt by the civilians before the war. And you're in the war? 
Oh, during the war, no, everybody was for you. Mm -hmm. But before the war, you see, it was only a case of uh, what they used to say was it's you either went to prison or joined the army, you know. You, uh, uh, so it, if you volunteered, you hadn't been to prison, if you volunteered, you was classed as a do it. So you, when you went to the pictures before the war, civilians queued that side and you queued that side. And you sat in the first three rows of seats in the cinema. You couldn't, if you had the money, you couldn't pay to sit in the back row. You had to sit down there. So when you, what's your best memory of your time in the army? That's all right. Yeah. That's what? That's the clock. I'm just waiting for it to stop so it's not on the video, so it doesn't drown the question. Hey? I'm just waiting for it to stop so it doesn't drown the question on the video. Oh, I see. Is that one of the trawlers you were on, though? Yes, I made that. I had a match six. Mm. Quite nice. <laughs> so I was saying, uh, what, what's your best memory of your time in the army? Best memory and best time in the army when I was a PT instructor at uh, Maidstone. Yeah, I mean, there's no best times when you when when he was at war. So when you were the instructor, well, what, what, you just have to instruct them all to do the certain actions. What well, when I was a PT instructor, I used to take them on physical training every day, different squad every half an hour. Was it hard work? It was hard work, yeah, but it's like everything else. Hard work is uh, when you get a job and you you get used to it, it becomes easy. You know, I mean, when I joined the army, I didn't like PT. But in the end, I mean, uh, you got used to it because, like, when I joined the army, you had, you had to do it, all this business, but when you was a PT instructor, you just had to show them and then uh, walk around and tell them, you know, hands up, knees up. I'm just checking the camera shots, OK? The camera shots are fine, no? So how did you come to be an instructor then? Uh, well, I was picked. I don't know. I don't know how, because as I said, I was at Shawcliffe, and they called me in the office and they said, uh, "You've got to go back to Maidstone as a PTI." I mean, how they picked me, I don't know. Might be because you build, because I was I was only nine seven eight mm -hmm. in weight, you know. I mean, to be a, be a PT instructor, don't mean to say you've got to have big muscles and all that, you know what I mean? You've got to have the agility to do uh, back flips and splits and handsprings and all that kind of stuff, you know. So when war started, were most of your friends sat, sent out to France? Uh, most of, yeah, well, them that was went, joined up with me, yeah, they finished up in France, yeah, I didn't. What happened to them? Well... Two of them got killed in, over there, but I, I lost the other one. I don't know where he went. We never kept in touch all that much. So were you not sent out because you were an instructor then? What, to France? Yeah. No, no. No, I was training the conscripts coming into the army at Maidstone. Mm -hmm. So were you a corporal by then? I was two stripes, yes, I was a corporal. So how did you come to be promoted like that then? Well... You can't be an instructor unless you've got a strike. So you get one strike to start with. Mm -hmm. And then as you progress, as you become better at it and you get, you, you're good with your squads, and then you get another strike. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could have got a third strike, but I didn't want it. Corporal's the best rank in the British Army. Why do you say that? Well, if the blokes complain, they tell the lance corporal, he tells me, I tell the sergeant. If the sergeant gives me an order, I tell the lance corporal, he does the orders. That's why you the British Army. You're in between. <laughs> you got to use your loaf. That's what you become. You, got, you know, you never volunteer enough and you use your loaf. Make life a lot easier.